You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. You wanted it, you got it. A radio program that helps teach you options trading inside and out, basic to complex. This is Options Bootcamp. Whether you want to learn how to protect your portfolio, generate income, or even become a master of volatility, the Options Bootcamp drill instructors will break it all down for you. Now, let's get you into peak options trading shape. Here are your Options Bootcamp drill instructors, All right, everybody, that music means it is time once again for Options Boot Camp, the program for you out there, the busy, certainly you're very busy these days, retail stock trader. Maybe you're looking to dip your toes into those options waters, or perhaps, just perhaps, maybe you've already started trading a little bit of options. Maybe it's gone well, like sounds like some of your listener mail, some of it has gone well, others perhaps not so much. Either way, we can help take that next step. We got you covered here on Options Bootcamp. Remember, if you like what you hear, keep those reviews coming in your platform of choice, wherever you get this, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, via the app stores. Our app's available in all the major app stores. A lot of you like to leave reviews there. Wherever you get it, leave those reviews so other folks can continue to discover the program out there. Of course, keep those questions coming, too. We do love to hear from you guys. My name, of course, Mark Longo from TheOptionsDecider.com, as well as, of course, from this fine network. And I am pleased to say that I am joined once again by my cohort, my partner in crime, the black-hatted one himself, Mr. Dan Passarelli, the founder of Market Taker Mentoring and the author of one or two options-oriented books, maybe three. Maybe I'll round up. <laughs> Mr. P, welcome back to Options Boot Camp, sir. Glad to be back as usual, Mark. Uh, oh, man, we've got a really great show planned for today, don't we? I was just reading over some of the notes. This is going to be great. Sounds like a planned stand. So let's get to it. A little bit of the old basic training. All right, Boot, it's time to get in line. What you're going to do is learn. You're going to learn how options work. Do you hear me? You're going to learn options trading inside and out, basic to complex. There will be no failures, do you hear me? Yes, sir! Pull in, prepare to learn. Yes, sir! All right, everybody. It's that time again. It is time for basic training. Even though maybe that's a bit of a misnomer today because... This is not exactly basic stuff <laughs> we're about to get into. We're going to get a little bit higher. Some might say hmm, perhaps a second order level of conversation. You'll see what I did there in a second. Yeah, we've had some conversations of late on the show and some listener questions about moving beyond the traditional Greeks. You know, your Delta, Gamma, Theta, Vega, sometimes Rho thrown into that equation. And getting into the, shall we say... The other Greeks, the what are traditionally referred to as the second-order Greeks, they have other names as well. In fact, that's one of the confusing things about this subject. All these things we're going to talk about have a myriad of different names attached to them. It makes it a little bit confusing. Now, if you've been with us for a while, you know we touched on this subject, but it was quite a while ago. In fact, I had to go back myself and see exactly how long ago it has been since we touched on second-order Greeks. And Dan, get ready for this. It was all the way back... In Options Boot Camp 59, going to the dark side with Second Order Greeks from January 14th of 2016. So, closing in on five years. Isn't that terrifying, sir? 
That is amazing, man. Man, we, we, we've been doing this a long time, haven't we? <laughs> yes. So if you want a full deep dive, you want more in your ear holes about second order Greeks, I encourage you, after you're done with this one, go back to wherever you listen to this. You might have to go into our app or our website. Some of the other platforms only limit you to more recent episodes. If you can't get all the way back to 59 on whatever platform you're listening to this to, make sure you go to our website, theoptionsider.com, or take our app and go to Options Bootcamp. You'll be able to find it there as well. Full, deep, one-hour-long dive into all things second order Greeks. Uh, but we thought now, since we're getting so many questions about this again, we have so many new listeners joining the show who are clearly at various levels of options experience. It's a good time to refresh on these things. So let's talk about what, what the heck we're talking about here. What are we talking Let's start there, maybe, Dale. Let's, before we even get to naming them and what they are, when I say a second-order Greek, what the heck am I talking about, sir? Well, so the Greeks, uh, you know, as we talk about on pretty much every show, are super useful tools because, you know, they, they help you understand how much your option position makes or loses when direction changes, when time changes, when volatility changes. But what a lot of people don't think about is that those things, delta, theta, vega, like those – also change. They also have a sensitivity when direction, time, and volatility changes. So the second order Greeks simply measure these, um, you know, kind of like second derivative uh, type scenarios where, where you know, how much does my delta, theta, or vega change when when time, volatility, or direction changes? So they're super important. Yeah, that's a great way to think about them. Is effectively they are measuring the sensitivity of some of the usuals, the big dogs we like to talk about, the traditional Greeks I just mentioned, uh, your delta, gamma, theta, and vega. And, of course, if you have a little bit more familiarity with the mathematical underpinnings uh, out there, you know what a second-order derivative is and how that applies to first-order derivatives, all that fun. We won't get into all that on the show today, but we're going to start breaking down some of the more useful, the more relevant, the more frequently cited second-order Greeks and explain to you guys a little bit about what they are and how they may or perhaps may not impact your trading. Dan, I'm going to kick this off, this conversation of second-order Greeks with a bit of a curveball, a bit of a surprise, because the first second-order Greek I'm going to talk about is Gamma. Dan, have I just blown your mind? Bang! Yeah, I know a lot of people don't about that because gamma is so commonly talked about, but it is indeed a second order Greek. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why newcomers and listeners to this show obviously have such a hard time wrapping their heads around gamma. They get delta, they look at it, they see it translates into a certain movement in the option. They get that. Theta may be a little bit harder sometimes because the units that theta is quoted in is a little bit sometimes hard to grasp, but they get the concept of it. Vega may be a little bit more obtuse, but they can sometimes usually wrap their heads on that, but gamma usually tends to blow their mind. And why is it? Because it's a second-order Greek that somehow snuck into the top five, the big five, (laughs) really the big four plus row. So yeah, think about it. Just think about it on the surface, listeners, when we're talking about gamma. What is gamma measuring? It's measuring your delta sensitivity or the rate of change of your delta to swings in the underlying. So it is in an effect. It's kind of like a stealth Second order Greek, it snuck right in there without you even knowing. (laughs) So when you're talking about the big four plus rho and you're talking about gamma and you're wondering, why don't I get gamma? What's what makes it so obtuse? Why does it take a second level of analysis and concentration for me to understand it? You're not alone. Don't feel bad. It's actually a second order Greek masquerading as a first order or shall I say a primary Greek. Dan, do you find this is a problem with a lot of your students as well. I mean, you wrote a book on the Greeks. I'm sure a lot of them come to you to talk about the Greeks. Do you find that gamma is a big stumbling point for a lot of them? Yeah, I feel like a lot of times people don't know what to make of it. You know, like they they learn about it, they read about it in my book or something, and they're like, uh, you know, one of two things happen. You know, it's either like, I don't know what to do with this. It's kind of deer in the headlights or or, or, or the opposite, actually, like they, they put it on their option chain and they look at it all the time and they try and use it. And, and there's some challenges to that as well, you know, because um, all the all these second order Greeks that we're going to talk about, including Gamma, they have like on a typical retail trading position where you're trying to make money generally off time or, or direction. 
you know, the effect is very small and and not super measurable. And and I think uh, we're going to kind of wrap up and talk about the actual importance and what you can really do with these things a little bit later. But there's a little fuel for thought until we get to that point. All right, let's get to that point. There. Let's move on now with some of the actual second order Greeks that you probably were, were wondering about, even though Gamma. Probably the most important one, not really talked about in that conversation all uh, too often. Let's go out now to some of the V names you may have heard of in your options wanderings. And I encourage you, if you want to dive into a deep rabbit hole, just type second order Greeks into your Google machine and see where that wandering takes you. I just caution you. It gets pretty deep. It gets pretty outlandish sometimes. And sometimes people use different names for these things interchangeably. And that could get a little bit confusing. So we'll try to point out the more common names here. But there are other names lurking around out there. We'll start with one of the more frequently cited ones. It's typically called Vanna. Sometimes if you're looking at a more straight mathematical definition, you might call it D Vega D Spot. You see what I did there? The rates of change of one versus the other. Or (laughs) D-Delta-D-Vol. Those names are a little bit more obtuse. Those are kind of the straight-up calculation-type names. I don't think most people in actual parlance really call them that. But uh, Vanna, of course, those names, uh, those other names I just told you should give you a bit of a clue, a bit of a hint of what we're talking about. Goes back to the big dog, one a lot of you guys like to fixate on, which is Delta. Of course, your rate of change in your options price as the underlying is moving. And now we're talking about Vanna being effectively the sensitivity of that delta to changes in implied vol. Usually it's geared around a 1% swing in implied vol. Your delta, of course, going to change. So we talk all the time about the importance of volatility. Usually people fixate it on it as effectively how much juice it is placing into that options price, and that's kind of where they come down on volatility's impact. But volatility impacts a lot of things, including the big dog, your delta out there. So this is certainly a second-order Greek that if you're doing a lot of options trading over time, you want to at least have some sort of passing familiarity with. Mr. Dan, what are your thoughts here on Vanna? And perhaps I know there's a lot of discussion out there about how Vanna evolves on a per strike basis, you know, where is Vanna most important? Is it at the money? Is it out of the money strikes? So maybe if you have thoughts on that as well, have at it, sir. Yeah. So, so again, uh, you know, just to repeat this, because it's something that a lot of people don't hear about, um, but, you know, Mark just said this, but so Vanna measures the changes in the delta when implied volatility goes up or down. Okay. And, you know, like to, to me, like, OK, I mean, first of all, you know, big professional traders and especially risk managers who have, you know, a portfolio of traders trading a bunch of stuff, just gigantic positions. This is extremely important. Um, you know, when I was a market maker and I, I actually I didn't even think about this being Vanna, but I talk about this in trading option Greeks. I just don't call it Vanna. You called you know, it Vanna White, didn't you? I know, I know what you did there. <laughs> oh, Vanna, um, yeah. So, uh, you know, when I was when I would trade big delta neutral positions and do what's called gamma scalping, this actually did have to come into play because you know if I was like short a lot of downside options, uh, you know, I know that my delta is is going to change well. I know that my implied volatility is going to change and that can affect my delta and that changes my whole way of thinking about my hedging. Um, But like to me, the important takeaway for the typical non-professional trader, what your broker calls a retail trader, is is just know that like when implied volatility goes up, uh, you're you're out in and out of the money options deltas gravitate towards 50 OK, and when implied volatility goes down, you're out and in the money options um, gravitate towards zero. And I'm just going to give like like I love kind of knowing the reasons behind things instead of just memorizing things like the best way to think about that is if you think about an option as being the likelihood of it expiring in the money, which is not 100 percent mathematically true. But if you think about it that way, the at the money uh, is a, is about 50% because it could be there's 50 50 chance of being in or out of the money at expiration. Again, there's a little bit of a fudge factor here. 
But like when the market's super volatile, if that stock's super volatile, that makes everything uh, more of a coin flip, more 50-50. So, so that's kind of the best way to think about it. At least that's how I rationalize it in my mind so that, you know, I'll never forget it. You know, it's been a while. I know I have a copy lurking around here somewhere. It's been a while since I cracked the old trading options Greeks to some of the, the back chapters there. Do you have a, like a, a chapter towards the end on, on second order Greeks anywhere, Dan? Uh, no, I don't think I do. But, um, it, you know, if, if we do a third edition, that might not be a bad thing to add. You can just call it the revenge of Vanna White. What does she have to do with options? Find out. I'm sure she wouldn't sue you for too much. <laughs> That, that would certainly sell a lot of copies. I think people, Vanna White and options? What am I missing? Bam, there you go. Free marketing advice for you, so that's gold <laughs> right there. All right, next up. <laughs> you thought that name was, was weird? They get weirder, don't worry. Uh, next up, kind of like, I guess you can call it Vanna's evil twin sister, Vama. <laughs> V-O-M-M-A, if you're looking to spell this in your searches out there. Listen, now we're getting a little bit farther afield. We're getting away from... Delta a little bit. I mean, obviously, people like to fixate on Delta. I've said it before. I think retail should broaden their horizons a little bit beyond just directional exposure. And that's kind of what Vama's getting us here. It effectively measures, again, second order Greeks are going to measure your sensitivity of one Greek to perhaps some other variable, some other changing thing out there, underlying volatility, time, those sorts of things. Vama, in this case, measuring the sensitivity of your Vega. So your options, Vega, with respect to vol itself. Remember, we said before, vol changing influences a lot of other things out there. It's not just making your option more expensive or cheaper, even though that's a very obvious and immediate impact. But all these Greeks interrelate and interoperate, interplay with each other. And that Vega, again... Not a fixed concept. People sometimes come to these Greeks and they think, oh, here's my position. I just ran my position. Here's all my Greeks. My delta is 57. You know, my vega is whatever. My gamma is whatever. And that's what my position is. No, these things are not fixed. They are not constant. They will change. They will change based on movement, on underlying, by interest rates, and, of course, by changes in volatility. And that's what Vama is measuring here, specifically when it comes down to your vega. So we talked about how vol changing impacts your delta, one of the big dogs. The only one of the other big dogs is Vega. And how volatility change impacts that is known, not confusingly at all, as Vama. <laughs> so, Dan, we got Vanna's evil twin sister, Vama. What do you want to add on this front, sir? Yeah, I mean, you know, the way to think about this is, um, and, you know, it's been a long time since I took calculus. I'm, I'm a practitioner, not a mathematician when it comes to options. But but it, it, it's it's sort of like the second derivative of, of uh, you know, vo- of volatility. Um, you know, when implied volatility goes up, options gain value, but there's some curvature to, to that line. Uh, and... And because Vega, Vega gets bigger as implied volatility goes up, like if implied volatility goes up, you make a little more than what your current Vega tells you. And when it goes down, you, you lose a little more than your current Vega tells you for long options. And now we're moving on to some of the, the better named, <laughs> I think. Well, this one actually has a bunch of names as well. I kind of like them all. Uh, They all do something a little bit different for me. The primary name, the name you're probably going to refer to it as and see it referred to in a lot of the literature and analysis and research is Charm. But it's also got some some cooler, somewhat more ominous names. It's also known as Delta Decay or my favorite version of this, Delta Bleed. That just – it just sounds so ominous. What's the delta bleed of your portfolio? You ask that to someone, you'll see their face just turn white because they're A, they've got no idea what you're talking about, and B, it just sounds, <laughs> it sounds so ominous. But we'll call it charm because that's probably what you're going to hear it called. But the name delta bleed or delta decay should also imply a little bit about what the heck we're talking about here. You know, we always talk about time decay, right? And the value of an option eroding over time because that time effectively erodes. I guess you can call theta time bleed as well, I guess, if you really if you really wanted uh, the time bleeding out of your option. Uh, but charm, like we kind of said, it measures your delta, the sensitivity of that delta, delta to changes 
in your time to expiration. As Dan kind of just alluded to, as you know, we talked about with Vega has impacts on the Delta, but that time to expiration has a change as well. Just think about me looking at an options options term structure, listening, looking at the nearer term options and then looking at the farther out options. Uh, you know exactly kind of what you to expect on a delta perspective, right? The farther out you go, the farther away from those absolutes, <laughs> right? You're going to get, you're going to get closer to that coin flip, more time effectively for something to happen. And you don't know what. So you have to pace that wiggle room. Whereas if you have an option that's uh, 10 handles in the money with about a minute to go, yeah, that's pretty firm 100 delta there. So the charm is going to measure how that delta changes once you start playing with the time. Let's say I want to add two weeks to my position. How does that change? Let's drag it out. I want to cut two weeks off of it. How would that change things? And uh, that's an interesting thing to watch. And as you start understanding a little bit more about your Greeks, it might be an interesting variable. So, Dan, what are your thoughts on Charm A? And then B, do you have a a preferred name? Are you also a fan of Delta Bleed? I like that. I like that. It's it's. It's powerful. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, but, you know, uh, the the thing is, is that many people listening to this right now may have never heard of Charm or Delta Bleed or whatever you want to call it. But chances are, if you've traded long enough, like you've you've actually probably observed this. And, and I'm going to show you a really easy way to observe it. All you have to do is go into your trading account, pull up like, you know, a good 15, 20 strikes. Uh, of several different expirations and and look at the deltas of you know the out of the monies and the in the monies and you'll 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 observe it like if you're looking at a leaps option that has a year to expire you know the at the monies around 50 and all the other options they're kind of around a 50 delta too they change very slowly as you get more in or out of the money but you know like mark pointed out like if the options expiring today like the at the money's 50 and then the ones out of the money are like you know really close to 100 or really close to zero and and that like you don't think about it this way but that actually is charm you know it, it's the illustration of that as time passes that delta changes yeah, i just like that delta bleed what's your delta bleed sir <laughs> i like that maybe you have to figure out some way to uh, work that into our title today all right we could keep going for a while there are a legion a myriad of second order greeks so kind of just hitting on some of the most frequently used and cited ones out here today listeners go back to check out episode 59 from january 2016 for a longer conversation on this topic we'll wrap it up here with veda v-e-t-a listeners, also known in the mathematical parlance as D-Vega, D-Time. That should probably tell you what the heck (laughs) we're talking about here. Once again, we're talking about the sensitivity of Vega. This time to time itself. We just talked about Delta's sensitivity to time, how you take that option that has, let's say, 10 minutes to go. That's 10 handles in the money. That's 100 Delta. Now you start extending that timeline out a year. Guess what? That Delta goes down. Now we see other types of effects with time when it comes to Vega itself. Mr. Dan, what are your thoughts here on it? Sounds almost like like a bad vegetable blender, the Veda. What are your thoughts here on Veda, sir? (laughs) Uh, You know, like Veda is another one of these where it's actually really important and you've probably actually observed this too. Um, You know, you've seen it in action, but maybe you didn't know the name and you didn't know to care about it. Um, But if you look at an option chain, especially of of at the money options, like look at the leaps, their Vegas are very, very big. Look at the ones that expire this week. Their Vegas are very, very small. But like, if you think about it, like the options that expire this week weren't just listed this week. They were, might be listed for a really long time. Their Vegas got smaller over time. And, and, and that's all this, you know, big fancy word Veda is. I think you could sum up a lot of these second order Greeks on big fancy words that are effectively just trying to quantify an effect that a lot of options traders have already seen for themselves empirically when they're out there trading options. They just didn't know there was an actual term for it. So that kind of raises the question as we're coming up against it here, Dan. You know, how how really important are these things at the end of the day? Why does your Joe basic five lot options trader, why should he or perhaps shouldn't he really be concerned with Veda and Charm, a.k.a. Delta Bleed? 
and Vanna and Vama and all the rest are. Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, there's a couple things like, like the really big trading firms where they have 20 traders that all have like gigantic positions. Like they need to know these exact values. I remember uh, talking to somebody, you know, when I was trading, uh, I think it was in the corn options at the time. And he was talking about this trading firm that lost is something like $10 million in a day. And they were Delta neutral. Uh, gamma neutral, theta neutral, and vega neutral. It's like, well, how the hell did that happen? And he's like, oh, it's the skew. Uh, it's measured by zeta, which, you know, isn't even on our list. But, you, you know, like those gigantic positions, like all these little little numbers, like add up huge. For a regular five-lot trader, like you said, though, you don't have to know the the value of VOMA. You don't have to know like the number, like, you know, exactly what that number is for VEDA or CHARM or even GAMMA. But it's really important to understand the concepts conceptually. And, 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 and that point, actually, I do talk in my book. I've got a section in there called the Dynamic Greeks because the Greeks always change and you become a much better trader with much better expectations. You just get good at all aspects of trading when you know how the Greeks change as these factors affect them. All right. We'll have to leave it there. Listeners, that music means we've run out of time on this dense, meaty episode of Options Bootcamp. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Remember, Check out episode 59, Going to the Dark Side with Second Order Greeks, if you want to know more. And, of course, we have touched on this time and again, I think mostly with listener questions, throughout the intervening nearly five years, which is terrifying to say out loud. If you have more questions about this, I'm sure you probably will. Hit us up. You know where to find us, at options on most of the major social media platforms or via wherever you get these. You can ask questions as well. Just it takes a little longer usually to get to us <laughs> on those platforms. Theoptionsider.com. Questions at theoptionsider.com also works. So you can tune into the live chat and get bumped up to the top of the list. Before we go, though, Mr. P, if folks are intrigued, maybe they got questions about Second Order Greeks. Maybe they have other questions about options. Where should they go? What should they do, sir? All glad to help uh, over at MarketsTaker.com. Hit us up. Feel free to contact us. We've got lots and lots of free resources uh, on our website that can be super helpful to traders of all experience levels. Uh, so any way we can provide any value to you and, and make your trading better and less stressful, uh, we're glad to do it. There you go. Check it out. MarketTaker.com. Two T's. Put in the second T for Theta. And, of course, if you want to join us live when we record these, usually it's on Education Wednesday, usually sometime around 2 p.m. Central, maybe a little early, maybe a little bit later. Of course, if you join us live, you get an extra bonus. You get to hear the second episode right now. Otherwise, you have to wait a whole other week until we come back with another episode of Options Bootcamp. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. 